Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Now, it's really insane about how bad the Labour Party is going to go. If you saw my video yesterday, or today's one, about how bad the candidates were trying to do yesterday in the Sunday interviews, fucking hell, you're not seeing anything yet. Right? You ready for it? Because it's going to take a little bit of uh, belief in actual reality of what's going on. I believe that every time the Labour Party tries to do something about the political campaign, it seems to go the complete other direction for what it's trying to do. So, what's it doing today? Well, leadership contest leader, uh, or go was going to be the head of the competition. Lisa Sunday now says men who identify as women and are convicted of rape should be allowed in women's prisons. You heard me right. Men who identify themselves as women and then get arrested for being rapists should be put into females or women's prisons. I'm not joking. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. We have an actual proper 7 minute video which actually came from the channel Posey Parker. I think that's how you say his name. And I'll leave the link of it below so you can watch the actual entire thing of itself. But it's, oh my god, the insanity you are, must be going through for this shit. Fucking hell, what the hell are they doing? I couldn't believe that either. It was, it was, it was like, fuck. So, Lisa, Lisa Nandy, I don't know why she's doing this to herself. Even during this video here, you see how bad things are got getting. And I thought Bernie Sanders was getting bad, but no. The Labour Party seems to be going hard fucking left. But the thing was, the bad thing about Lisa Nandy is that she used to be part of a women's activist group for women's rights. Now, this is the one time I'm going to defend feminists, or stand with them on this subject, because it's fucking insane. Who actually thinks it's a good idea to put rapists in the same cells as women, even if I identify as fucking woman, if they're ge genetically a man? You can't just change your thoughts instantly, can you? Fucking hell. That's all you have to get when you're arrested, or you're, arrest you're arrested for being rapist. Oh, I'm a woman now. What a fucking shame. I'm not going to jail now, but I'm going to fuck wifey's jail, and... I can't rape anyone, because I've got a willy between my legs which can't rape anyone, because I'm female. Fucking stupid. Oh man, this is me just on a ranting for three minutes. But we should be taking a look at the video here to see how bad this gets. And I, I can't believe how bad this goes. So let's go take a look. Fucking hell. Thank you. Um, this week you've been very unequivocal about your support for a policy which has come to be known as sex self id um the idea that whether someone is a man or a woman is basically down to a matter of them saying you know saying what they are and going through an administrative process so i wanted to ask you given um the growing number of sex offenders such as someone like christopher wharton who is um, a male sex offender who's a, he's a child rapist who was convicted last year of which you called, or who's already convicted of being of multiple child rape, who is now claiming to be a woman. Given that we know there's a growing number of these men, I've got three questions. Should his crimes be recorded, as he would wish, as being committed by a woman? Should, be, should he be accommodated in a women's or a men's prison? prison? And should women in the Labour Party be seen as a hate group if we raise questions like this. Just before Lisa answers those questions, I'm going to answer them for you. No, no, and no. And I really love how n uh, Lisa's actually going to answer this question, because I've, I've seen this before, and she's actually going to end up calling the a woman a hate group. You know, the women's campaign group for their rights and all that. You don't call them a hate group. 
but let's see what the answer comes to be. Lovely. Um, okay, let me try. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take them in order, if that's all right. And I'll start with this question about the Gender Recognition Act, because um, and I'm, excuse me for taking a bit of time over this, but I want to treat it with care because I think it deserves careful language and most of all a bit more light and a bit less heat than we've managed to have in this debate so far. So uh, the questions that you asked were about whether cri the, the crimes of a particular person should be recorded as by a woman or a man. And I, I, believe, I believe fundamentally in people's right to self-ID and I believe that the Gender Recognition Act strikes the wrong balance in relation to that. So I think that crimes that are recorded should be recorded as that person wishes, having gone through that process, received support, um, and self-identified. Um, you asked... Fucking hell. Really? Are you fucking serious about that? Are you fucking insane? I'm sorry, but really? You think it's okay for a convicted paedophile rapist who's raped a child to go into the same ward as a fucking woman's ward? Fuck me! Are you insane? Man! Do you think it's okay? Fucking hell! The guy's convicted of rapist? You know, you tend to need something between your fucking legs to do raping, don't you? Fanny and Fanny doesn't do raping, does it? Fucking hell! So, you're trying to tell me any pedophile, well Jimmy Savile's fucking scored at this fucking late, if he, if he didn't have died, he would have fucking scored at this late, he would have been fucking amazing at his job. Oh, this go and shag some dames, I'll rape a few too, but it's alright, I'll identify myself as a female, so I can go to the cells of the woman, I can rape fair mare. But the thing is, if they say I rape them, that's me. Gender equality enough, is it? Fuck me. Oh, man. How how dare you say that? And you're just trying to say it's... Next to be okay to... No, I'm not even... I'm not even going to go there. Wow. And you just see the smug on her face. He's like, that's it. I got you out the game, woman. I got you out. You fucked. You fucked. And it's true, and she's fucked, and it's okay, it's okay, this can't get any worse. Surely. I mean, it's just Lisa that's going behind this, right? Uh, people, trans people should be in women's or men's prisons. Well, I think trans women are women, and I think trans men are men. So I think that they should be in the prison that they're choosing. Um, and do you, do you Times wish I, sh I shut the fuck up. Are they actually serious? Are you telling me the Labour Party and all these Labour members are supporting this? Are you fucking real? You're supporting people who are child rapists that should be in women's prisons, but it's okay. I cha I'm a transgender man. I'm a transgender woman. There's a reason there's a fucking law to make sure these people are separate. And there's also a lot of pe things wrong with that alone. Just the fact to say accept them as transgender males and females doesn't help. Man. I mean, I know they some of them are really tough to go through, but the thing is, you can't exclude the actual conversation from your party, can you? But the thing is, oh, we are so progressive. We might as well be Soviet Russia at this stage, but with gay people. And I even know the Russians don't fucking like that. And put transphobes in this? Fucking hell, why are you appealing to the minority? Wow. I think this is a pie for the woman. It's not. It's a, the, it's a pie for anyone else. Let's see what else she's got to say. I don't even know what to think of it anymore. You nuts. Women in the Labour Party who raise questions about this should be expelled. No, I don't. I, why, I do think that that, that, why did you sign the pledge? Why did you sign the pledge? I'll explain about Women's Place UK. I'll, I'll explain because um, I do think that a meaningful dialogue 
and a widest possible dialogue about something that is deeply emotive and deeply sensitive to people is really, really important. But I think if you deny the right of trans people to exist, and you deny their very basic human rights, then it, it, there no meaningful dialogue is possible at all. And that is one of the reasons why I have a fundamental disagreement with the statements and aims of that organisation and of other organisations that cause deep, deep hurt to people who have the right to have their existence recognised. Now let's... Oh, man. You easy to see on the girl's face, don't you? She's like, I've caught your fucking hoot. Oh, man. That's just insane. You wrote the pledge so you... Your Labour Party couldn't uh, speak about transphobic quotes, eliminating the actual conversation from the Labour Party, so we can't discuss the situation at all, but we'll let them do whatever they want anyway. This is fucking stupid. And you're trying to tell me the women's activist group, the ones that fight for women's rights, which I understandably so is some probably needed sometimes, because not everyone's perfect. You trying to tell me the minority group of transgender people who can't decide which gender they are because of fucking politics, because of bad parenting and bad fucking economics in their brain, somehow get the overall decision of what happens to women now. So women are the minority now. What the fuck are you doing? You're just trying to... You, it sounds like you're trying to buy your way into the transphobic community. Why? I mean, yeah, some of them are a bit... Oh, I don't even know what to say about it new. Because we know people who have transgender issues have a very, very disturbed mind. That's the biggest problem with it. Like, they have real problems. They have lots of depression problems and that. I certainly had depression. I didn't want to fucking change my gender. But I could always become a unicorn or a pencil if I feel like it. Even though my job, I felt like becoming a wheelchair just because I couldn't be bothered being a fucking male. Fucking hell, how stupid is this? You're pandering to the... The minority, aren't you? Fucking hell, how long is this going to keep going for? I bet, I bet there's more lich to this. Who's asking for the get trans people to not have a say? Who the fuck's asking for that? No one's one of them dead. I've never heard that before. I'm still waiting to hear somebody to come out from the political end of you saying they want rid of transphobic people. They just don't want it in the same cells as fucking criminals and rapists. If you understand how it comes to be a woman, fucking hell. Keep going. I'll say this as well is that I represent a town with one of the highest domestic violence rates in the country and have done for 10 years. So I am very, very acutely aware of the need for safe spaces for women, particularly women who are at risk, who are of a threat of violence or of harm, who may no longer be at risk but feel that they are and need to have that taken seriously and dealt with and addressed. And I think these are serious questions that deserve a serious debate. When I worked at the charity centre point, we had to put a lot of thought and time into the policies and practices in our hostels to make sure that we kept people safe, young people, in our hostels from others who would seek to do them harm. I'm stopping you there. That didn't last for all. Are you fucking real? You just literally pandered to the transphobic community or people who don't like you know transphobic women to transphobic people or transphobes what the hell you're supposed to call them who i don't even know and now you're trying to pander to women now what the fuck are you doing uh, you're trying to pander to both of them you're causing firing lines between both of them you're gonna end up getting a massacre soon aren't you my god why are you pandering to them Protect young people. Aye, let's go and put them in the jail cells. We the rapists who are attacking young queens. Who are raping them like the Manchester ones. But it's alright. They look different colour so they get a free pass. But it's alright. Moo they identify as a fucking quine. It's fine new, isn't it? Christ. At the time.
time that often played out around violence against women and girls, but it also played out around things like the fact that we had um, Ethiopian and Eritrean refugees being admitted to our hostels at the time. And we had to make sure that former child soldiers who'd been on other sides of that conflict were safe in our hostels and that nobody came to any harm. And I think that <coughs> it cannot be beyond our collective wit to take the heat out of this, to accept that the job is not to pit some women against other women, but to work together constructively in order to keep people safe. And that is the approach that I take and it's the approach that I've always taken towards women in my constituency who are desperately concerned about male violence and towards um, the young girl who I'm currently supporting in my constituency who has been going through this Gender Recognition Act process for the last two years. The waiting times are awful. The bullying and the discrimination is awful. And an act which was meant to provide more support to young people in her situation has actually made it worse for her and made it harder. That is why I've taken the stand that I've taken. I'm always willing to discuss it and debate it with people. But on that very fundamental aspect, that that young person is going to hear nothing from me in this contest that gives her any idea that she has anything other than my complete and utter compassion and support, I will not move. What are you doing? Um, what? I, I, I don't get what I just saw there again. So you're trying to pander to safe spaces now? But this protect the woman because of that reason and use this reason because that reason doesn't make any sense so we're going to use this reason to make that to make sense doesn't work and that waiting time thing that's stupid it does actually take a long time for the genetics of somebody going through a transgender process to actually change because your body isn't immune from the the beginning of your birth to actually be male or female once you come outside the womb unless you're some special mutated animal from the x-men franchise you were born male or female and your body are genetically engineered for it and apparently according to medical experts the two years is just about the right amount of time for a transgender because there's someone I've heard of that needs to go through a lot of processing because it takes a lot of time, a lot of mental consultation, a lot of things to happen to that person so they can change their body from a male to a female. Because if anyone's not aware, those bodies work completely different. A female body works completely different to a male body. And if someone has the capability to change their physical body and mind to get down the testosterone levels and change what they want to be, that's turning down if you want to be a man to a woman, and you want to do that stuff, go ahead, do it. But the thing is, it's going to take time. And the, the two-year waiting list? Really? It sounds like the waiting list you're using for the NHS is a disgrace, not the transgender stuff and should anyone be bullied about this no they shouldn't be getting fucking bullied about this i mean i don't understand why they do it anyway i got the idea of why they want to do it but honestly it just doesn't make sense to me at all it's like why would you change your biology because i've seen a lot of cases where people change their biology and well they're not happy with it because i think there's this one big case that they showed that this guy wanted to change his giant gender back in the late 50s or so on 50s 60s or something like that and well let's say his family wasn't really happy about it i mean i get the idea of people people's families are getting torn apart when somebody decides to turn gay well that used to be a thing but knew it's more acceptable. Look at fucking Philip Schofield. Look at that incident. It's not like his wife or kids are devastated at all. No. No. When you do your transgender thing, that's adding another step to it. Because you're going people like the Labour Party here, which seems to be pandering to these people, which don't have a big minority 
our group in the actual situation how things go. I'm sorry, but it is because not everyone has a, is a transphobe. Everyone's gone dick or fanny, and that's it. Simple. Don't know how hard it is to speak about it, but should people be bullied? No, they shouldn't be. But the thing is, the situation with transgender people are probably the more intense factor of what's going on now compared to what the gays, the black community, and all that stuff had to deal with before, race, gender, stuff. don't even know where it's all going now, because I think this 10 years is going to go insane, isn't it? But I think the wife is going to stand up and say something. Hopefully it's wise. of trans activists bashing on the windows of when Women's Face UK had a meeting. Why did none of you speak out about that if, you're, if you wanted to take the heat and what, have genuinely, more light in the debate? Genuinely did, didn't you didn't know. know, but it was talked about at a conference. But, but I'm happy to talk to you about it. I mean, you know, look, this is, a, this is a... You know, I've been at meetings for the last few years, particularly in the Labour Party, the last four years in particular, where almost every issue has become a flashpoint and immediately the room has had to divide into one side or other. And what I feel happens at those moments, I've always felt it, whatever the issue, is that most people have nowhere to go. Because this polarised politics, I think, just does not reflect the reality of the country that we live in and the reality of the values most people have. And we have far more in common, as my friend Joe once said, than that which divides us. I want us to become that Labour Party again. And that's why I'm grappling with these questions and I'm engaging with these issues. And look, I won't always get it right on all of those issues. I haven't always got it right. And I'll reserve the right to change my mind. But that's what I ask of everybody else here in this movement too. That is the sort of debate that I believe in. And when I say I believe in a, a Labour Party that is united, I do not mean for a moment that I believe in a Labour Party that is uniform. We have to be able to challenge one another constructively and decently. That is how we get these great reforming Labour governments of these broad teams that have reach into every part of our country and can hear what is happening in different parts of our coalition. That's the Labour Party I believe in and I am prepared to go out and fight for it. Well, that's me done. I, I don't even know how to take this on anymore. I don't think I'm actually believing what I'm hearing. Why though? It's like so stupid and it's like fucking why? It's like we're trying to b i actually really happy she came out with that statement there. You know the women's meeting thing did get actually get attacked by transphobic people or whatever the situation was. It was on about that situation and it was actually quite intense and the fact that people are going out and getting violent about this it's nuts. But if you want to watch this video fully without any cuts in, butts in, whatever, so on, you have free will to do so. The link is below of this video. Obviously not as long as this one. But thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a good day and hope you check out the rest of the content, which hopefully I don't have to look at this subject again. But I might have to look at it again anyway, because it looks like the labour competition is going to go even more screwed. So thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe. And hail the Empire.